Greetings and welcome to This Month in Warhammer Underworlds for March 2021. This is your one-stop shop for everything Warhammer Underworlds related, recapping everything that's happened in the past month. And once again, there's been a lot of news for our favourite competitive arena combat miniatures game. As always, each news item has its own timestamp, which can be found in the episode description below. Also, please like and subscribe as your support helps keep the channel growing. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this episode and what you'd like to see. As always, I'm always open to feedback and comments. The big news for March was the long-awaited release of the Starblood Stalkers, our fourth Diachasm Warband, and the appearance of the Seraphon in Warhammer Underworlds. This six-fighter warband may be tough to use for new players, but it has a high skill ceiling, meaning experienced players will be able to get a lot out of the Starblood Stalkers. Of course, there were vocal minorities upset at the performance of the warband, but the days of expecting warbands to be broken or overpowered on release seem to have gone with Diachasm, and also they've literally only been out for, what, like two weeks? What, what do you think? The Starblood Stalkers generally won't steamroll everyone, but I can totally see them doing very well in the hands of an experienced player. After all, the warband has lots of tricks and strong faction cards. If you want a full in-depth review, I have both YouTube video reviews and my standard article review, which you can find in the episode description below, along with some battle reports using the Starblood Stalkers in some webcam games featuring myself. During the Faith and Damnation Warhammer TV livestream on Twitch in March, Kanan's Reapers were fully revealed as the seventh warband for Warhammer Underworld's Diachasm. These warriors of the Ossiarch Bone Reapers are led by Kanan, a giant Mortisan executioner. Accompanying him are five Mortec warriors, bringing us our second six fighter warband for Diachasm and our fourth six fighter warband for Warhammer Underworld as a whole. Personally, I love the Bone Reaper aesthetic. Even if Kanan looks a bit like Optimus Prime and has really tiny feet. How will the Warband play? Well, there's hints to that with the Bone Tithe mentioned on their fighter cards, but you'll have to wait till hopefully May to find out more. I will say they were a lot of fun to playtest, and I'm itching to add more Ossiarch Bone Reapers to my Age of Sigma army. The Diachasm roadmap was also updated to reveal a fish. I wonder what aquatic race would use fish in Warhammer Underworlds. Obviously the Little Mermaid. Anyway, this mystery is too deep for me to figure out. I guess I'll have to consort with some of my kin to figure it out. The Warhammer community site dropped their preview for the April White Dwarf. In it, they showed that it focused on new players and the new Warhammer Underworld starter set in their monthly Warhammer Underworlds column. The March issue of White Dwarf leaked a lot of the Starblood Stalker cards, which I covered, so maybe the same will happen for the new warbands in this new core set. Either way, hopefully it's a sign that the starter set will be dropped in April, although with everything going on in the world, it wouldn't surprise me if it was delayed, unfortunately, as you know, White Dwarf is made far in advance and there's been crazy shipping delays happening with everything in general, really. In another really strange twist, Warhammer community dropped the Warband focus for the Crimson Court, while they're not even close to being released. Why drop this article so far ahead of the Warband that it's dedicated to? No idea. I'm guessing it's because they forgot to delist it, because they probably put up a ton of articles in advance. Either way, we now all know that the Crimson Court basically have three-sided fighter cards. If each fighter has too many hunger counters, they become bloodthirsted, which represents their animalistic and hungry nature. To inspire, they must lose all their hunger counters as they gain control of themselves and regain their elegant and noble natures. It sounds good on paper, but it'll be left to be seen how this plays out in-game, as it sounds very complex. A special request. This has been requested by many of a fan, and I thought it was, yeah, you know, actually appropriate and newsworthy. This focuses on the community desire for a new FAQ and Forsaken and Restricted list, FAR. Did you know that we haven't had an FAQ since June 2020? 
it's shockingly bad. We last had a fire update in December with the Diachasm launch. Even if people can't play regularly, there's still a lot of dedicated people playing online, either via webcam, Vassal, or whatever format, really. Unfortunately, Diachasm is in a sorry state for balance, thanks to old cards and, well, older warbands. Molog in particular has become even more toxic than ever, even with his tome build from before. While people may say Warhammer Underworlds doesn't need an FAQ and FAR update, my response to that is then why do Warhammer 40,000 and Age of Sigmar get regular balance updates while being in exactly the same position as well as other Games Workshop game systems? I know if nothing happens, more and more tournament organisers are considering doing their own custom comp for their events. If Games Workshop don't update the FAR and FAQ soon, it looks like the community will have to start balancing Warhammer Underworlds instead. After all, I've been in contact with a lot of, F a lot of tournament organisers because, you know, I was basically, well, I implemented my own custom FAR list for my Underworlds UK Masters. And yeah, a lot of tournament organisers are considering doing it themselves. It's, it's not a good look. Just, just drop a FAR update. Just balance the game. It is the ultimate competitive arena miniatures combat game after all. For Warhammer Underworlds Online, it had a fairly quiet month for March. Outside of the regular bug fixes, the game saw the Animus Forge added to the game. More boards are always awesome to see, but I would have liked to see the Arcane Nexus as well, just because that's probably my favourite board they've ever made for the game. The game also saw more Universal cards added, around 9 in total. Unfortunately, they were mostly Turtle Control Shadespire cards. Sans the awesome Superior Tactician. Hopefully, we see more Universal cards added soon in order to add more flexibility to the Warbands as well as greater player choice. For Podcast Corner, March kicks off with Path to Glory. They cover their result in the Straight Outer Shades by Webcam Tournament for March, then have three episodes dedicated to the Starblood Stalkers expansion, from Warband cards to reviews and tactics. They're even joined by Tommy Conboy, who makes an especially quick take on how he views the Starblood Stalkers, as well as with a deck guide. What the Hex drops three episodes for March. First, they list off the universal cards affecting the meta the most before the Starblood Stalkers expansion hit, and then they have two episodes dedicated to the Starblood Stalkers, basically covering the cards that come in the Warband expansion. Finally, there's me with Critcast Episode 9 returning to Warhammer Underworlds. Instead of talking about the new releases, I'm joined by once again Rob as we go over how to best approach returning to Warhammer Underworlds as a veteran player. New players will also find it useful, but we aim this episode mainly at players who took a break from Warhammer Underworlds and are looking at how to get back up to date with the game. We cover all the tips and resources you need, as well as reflecting on our own difficulties with the subject matter in getting back into regular Warhammer Underworlds gaming. For example, we reflect on Basically, we did some battle reports and we reflect on our progress and the mistakes we made and just learning the up-to-date rules with Diachasm as we become more familiar with the season again. For tournaments and events for March, we just had the Straight Out of Shadespire webcam tournament. This event was run in my newly christened Highlander format because there can be only one. What is Highlander format, you ask? It's basically a tournament where every player uses a unique warband with no doubles allowed, making this the ultimate brawl for Warband Supremacy. After four rounds of best of one games, Aman with his Magor's Fiends proved triumphant. He managed to beat Garrix Reavers and won the event, partly thanks to Molog somehow drawing. Aman played amazingly well, and you can see the game he played against Thorns of the Briar Queen in the tournament on my YouTube channel. It's a really interesting game, and it's two really evenly matched warbands and players. It's great fun. Uh, I highly recommend watching it. You'll learn a lot. If you want to play in the next one, it will be happening on Saturday, the 3rd of March, which is technically tomorrow. I'll be commentating and casting an event again with my co-host Rob, and you can catch all the action live on my Twitch channel. And I'll be uploading some of the games to my YouTube. Probably I'll go for the final, or whatever game I think is most interesting but either way, you can watch the action for free on my Twitch channel. 
For the summary of my March content, March was really busy for me. I had the February news recap, my first article for the Digimon card game, introducing the game and detailing my experiences in the webcam tournament. I talked about the leaked Starblood Stalker cards from White Dwarf and then had the Starblood Stalkers review itself on my YouTube and blog site. Then I also had Critcast episode 9 and multiple YouTube videos as well as Twitch streams for Warhammer Underworlds. On top of that, I also celebrated Can You Roll a Crit turning free. It's been crazy and I'm happy I'm still going now as the oldest and longest running Warhammer Underworlds content creator somehow. Once again, thank you to everyone who reads, watches and messages me. Your feedback and support is what helps keep me going. Like, yeah, my main drive is just helping people. So yeah, thanks for the support and here's hoping to many more years of helping people with Warhammer Underworlds and whatever other games I may choose to cover. For March, we've had the Starblood Stalkers, the reveal of Kanan's Reapers, and an early look at the Crimson Court. April looks like we'll be having the vampires to join us, along with, hopefully, the new Warhammer Underworld starter set as well. Before I go, please feel free to check my affiliate link to Element Games in the episode description below. Any purchase you make by clicking through the link nets you a 15-25% to discount at no additional cost to yourself while helping to support me and the channel. So yeah, check it out if you can. And yeah, as always, Please remember to like and subscribe and yeah, pop a comment as to what you'd like to see me cover potentially in the future as well as any of anything in general. The Starblood Stalkers have come to blow up the diachasm and save us all, probably. Yet in their shadow lurks the hungering Crimson Court. As we wait for old scores to be settled and rivalries to continue in the eternal mountain of death, there is only one constant, the ability to roll a crit. Oh yes, I got something else in March as well. Roll a crit. <laughs>